Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we are working on a new album. This album is going to be, the outside dimensions are going to be 10.5 wide by 8.5 tall. It's going to have a 2.5 inch spine. It's going to have four pocket pages, and we are doing Blue Fern. Um, this is a Christmas collection. It's called Mistletoe and Holly, and um, I, I've spoken about it before, but I really love... Um, the blue fern paper it feels so good in your hand so I'm really excited to be working on this Christmas project so let's go ahead and get started so this is page one and we're going to start with installing a pocket over here on the left hand side this pocket is five and a quarter inches wide by four and a half inches tall you're going to score a half inch on the five and a quarter inch side and then you're going to come across and score another half inch. So I like to rotate it in my um, scoreboard, half inch, half inch, half inch. And you're going to have your pocket. And that's going to get installed flush with the left hand edge of page one. This paper is really pretty. So I'm using 8x8s and 12x12s, and then also I'll have the whole material list in the description. Um, I'm going to be using uh, what they call bits and bobs, which are like ephemera cards from graphic, and also some die cuts. So this is going to be a, a fun project. Again, this is going flush with the left hand corner, page one. Okay. Now we're going to have a flap. It's going to get installed um, over here, um, and I'm going to have a little space in between. So I'm just going to do some dry fitting really quick to make sure it's right where I think it's going to be. It looks good. So this, you're going to start with eight and a half, eight and a half across by eight inches tall, eight and a half across by eight inches tall. You're going to score at a half inch. And then again at five and seven eighths, half inch five and seven eighths. This is going to become a little pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and I normally have a flange but because I'm doing a fold over pocket like this instead of just adding it to the top I'm just going to run a bead of glue. Um, it's going to be a relatively wide pocket anyway so it's okay we'll be able to get a couple of inserts in there. I go as close to the edge as possible so that I'm not taking up any of the, um, the width of the pocket. I glue that closed. Okay, now this is going to get installed on the right hand side. Before I do that, nope, that's not right. It's going to get installed like this. This um, pocket bottom is going to go flush with the edge of the page. I had that wrong. So there's going to be a decorative strip that runs right in between here. So we're going to do a little bit of decorating. And I'm going to tell you, is this, or show you actually, here's my strip. So this is one 12 by 12. goes this way and I just did a continuous cut this is going to come across like that and then these two pieces are the rest of the 12 by 12 so this particular 12 by 12 I saved the strip I think or did I I think I lost it uh, is there a number I guess it's called twinkle um, or maybe that's let me see if they all have a different name. Yeah, this page is called Twinkle. So I used the 12 by 12 here. And I started uh, from the left and just sliced as I went along. And because this is a 10 inch page, you know that I've had a little bit uh, left over. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and decorate this pocket, put the, po the backing to the pocket in and this strip, and then we'll add that flap. And it looks like I need to ink. Paper. 
it's so thick. So because this is such thick designer paper, um, I always use 65 pound uh, cardstock for the base album, um, except for when it's white, I usually go up to 80. But um, some people use 80 for all of them, but this is so heavy. I mean, it's in line with 110 pound cardstock. You might want to consider using a lighter um, base because you're gonna get a lot of weight with this cardstock. And I love it. It's awesome for mixed media because of its weight. Okay, and then this is just a continuation of the same strip. And you may not notice, but I'm going to let you know, and then you might notice um, I'm using a different camera. So we'll see how that goes. The um, resolution should be much higher. So we'll see. I got an upgrade. And I had to go through a little bit of a learning curve, naturally. <clears throat> okay, now this strip is going to go right here. And it looks like I need to take a smidge off the top. <clears throat> Let's see how I did. The camera is in a different location. It's much closer to the project. So I don't know if that means you're going to get more on the top of my head or less. We'll see. And then the other thing I'm still going to be adjusting to is volume. Um, the microphone is a lot closer to me now. So hopefully, um, I won't have to do as much software editing uh, post-production. We'll see. I'll let you know. Or you'll probably let me know. If you can hear me or not hear me. Okay, now this is going to get installed flush with this edge. So we're just going to settle it in based on over here. This is the card that I chose to go in this pocket. And I, there's two in the bits and bobs. There's two uh, front and a back for each one. I'm going to use the front in this page too. I really like um, the pine cones. Okay, so I'm just going to shore up these two corners. There we go. Now this is going to come in and finish this pattern. And this finishes this pattern. So I think yeah, I think both of these are going to be trimmed just a little bit. So I'll go ahead and mark these and trim them and ink them. Yeah, I think I rough cut it at at eight and didn't uh, take off from my border. Mm -hmm. We are, I live in San Diego, I think most of you know that, 
We are um, getting some really unprecedented weather. My husband and I were just out in the back, and um, we were enjoying a, a lightning show. It's not, it's over the mountains by us, but um, there's supposed to be, believe it or not, a hurricane coming in Saturday, which might turn into a tornado. That's pretty unusual for us. So we've been kind of battening down the hatches and moving all our potted plants and making sure patio furniture isn't going to get thrown into one of our sliding glass doors today. So it'll be interesting to see how things go. Hopefully uh, it won't be a big deal. Usually when we have a bad storm, the worst of it is we might lose power. Good. Just double checking, dry fitting. Could probably take a little bit off. I've been recording just a little bit at a time because it's been so warm in my craft room. It's at the end of a hall and I get no cross breeze at all. And if I open my window, all you can hear is my air conditioner. So, there you go. Of the cable. Okay, now we have um, this Christmas card. I'm kind of going back and forth about whether or not I want to mat it in black. It's going to get mounted here, and then of course this is going to be a pocket. And we'll come back to that in just a minute. We're going to go ahead and open this up, and we're going to put a flap inside. Now this hinge goes to the right hand side, and this is five and a half inches. You're going to score a half inch on the five and a half inch side and it is eight inches tall. And as you can see, that's going to leave us a lot of photo space on the inside of this. And lots of journaling space with the pockets. Pockets on the front. Okay, let's go ahead and add some magnets. Oops, that's two magnets. <laughs> now, because this cardstock is so thick, you really need to think about magnet placement. If you're not going to do this design, you're going to do something on your own. Think about magnet placement because you really need to minimize the number of layers of cardstock between your two magnets or use bows or swing tabs or something else um, because again this is roughly 110 pounds 
Um, so if it has to go through, you know, a couple of these plus the 65 pound cardstock, you're going to lose uh, a lot of the um, attraction on the magnets. Okay. There we go. And again, this page I used for the outside or for the design up till now is called Twinkle. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece and put it behind here and see if I want to mount it or not. I like the, the gold edge around it. I think it's pretty. And the black is just going to make it pop that much more. So I just want to lay it down and see if I like it. And we'll make that decision quickly. Actually, I should, should have gone this way. Preserve more of my scrap. The bits and bobs are 4x6, and they're true 4x6, which is kind of nice. The other thing I noticed, it's been a while since I've done anything with um, Blue Fern, but I was looking at their die cuts, and I seem to recall that they used to have a lot more white around the border, and they've really changed that. Um, which I like because I used to go back around it and cut some of the white off because their patterns aren't bright white and then that bright white layer around it just didn't look right. So they've really done a really good job with getting the die sized right for uh, the print. So. I'm liking it. And you really don't have to back them because they're so thick they, you know, they feel substantial. Now we'll take a look and see what if we like it, with or without. I usually tend to go with because it just makes it stand out that much more. That's with, without, with. Now that's a pocket, so I don't have to worry about covering the back of this. So we're going to um, basically center this up, down, left, right, and glue half of it down. So two is my center. So I know that's where my glue goes. Be careful your glue doesn't squish out and you glue your pocket closed. Pull that closer to me. pretty good. Okay, now we need an insert. Okay, so this is the right length that needs to be a little bit deeper. So what I want is for there to be a frame around this with the insert. So this is the right length. Seven needs to be seven by probably five. I'm guessing. Yep, five by seven, which is a good size. Okay, double check. We'll tuck it in the pocket. See how it looks. And of course, this could be a card or, or yeah, that's perfect. That's that's gonna do it. Actually, could could have been a quarter. I, I like it. It's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter, a quarter inch shorter. Um, seven. So let's make it six and three quarter. 
by seven, a six and three quarter by five. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we'll find something to cover that with, but that's a holding point. I'm gonna go ahead and write down my measurement. So it's five inches across by six and three quarters. That's your insert. And then we still need to cover all this photo space here. So I'm going to take a break and line up the rest of the papers. When I come back, we'll finish decorating page one. All right, everyone, I'm back and I've chosen my papers for um, the B side of the of this page. This is what I selected um, to go inside the pocket. I liked it because it was kind of busy against this um, somewhat subtle background. So I think that makes a nice little frame. Um, I think I told you what this was, but it's five by six and three quarters, five by six and three quarters. Okay. And then here are the panels that I've chosen for the inside. I'm kind of going back and forth on whether I want this layout or if I want these two to match when you open it. And then these two to match. I like both, but I think I'm gonna go with this. So on the inside, these are 12 by 12s. We're gonna have this layout, and I think I inked it all while I was away. Yay, so this will go pretty quick. I like this. It's kind of subtle uh, compared to some of the other prints. And it has sort of that um, vintage look in the background. Where this one has a lot of bright whites. And this paper's nice. Okay. I'm gonna go back and forth and I see the other side. And I like it better with the uh, more subdued colors. Okay, looks like I inked it. Looks like I got a, one of these lines are crooked. It must have been this one. I should have dry fit it first because there's a, a little bit of a gap here. Not a gap. Um, it looks like it veers in. You can kind of see it goes whoop. So I, I don't know how I managed that. I must have torqued in my trimmer. That's something if I had not trimmed this paper, I would try to fix by widening it here, even if it's not a straight cut on the paper, so that visually it appears even, but I already trimmed the paper and I still don't think it's too bad, but it's something I might have approached a little differently. The This paper is super, super smooth, and I told you it's really heavy, so um. It takes a few minutes for the glue to dry because it's it doesn't have a lot of tooth to it. 
um, which is kind of nice for a change because then I, I can wiggle things around just a little bit. Oh, didn't like that at all. I'm going to trim that off because it's going it's to leave a little bit of a bump there. Hmm. We're all kind of sitting tight here in San Diego. Um, I guess our weather's probably not going to hit us until this evening. So I'm going to go out and run a couple of errands before the weather hits us. So I'll finish this up and then... Uh, I should have directed that like I did. Perfect. Now, uh, if you're new to the channel, I like a 16th inch border. So, to achieve that, you take your finished panel size once you've got your hinge hidden. And then you take off one eighth inch off height and one eighth inch off width, and then that will give you a sixteenth inch border once you center your paper. That's why I don't give you the measurements for the designer paper because some people like an eighth inch, some people like a quarter inch. Um, but you have the cut list for the panels, so take that, subtract any flange that's added as a hinge. And then that becomes your base panel, and then subtract whatever you want your border to be. If you want a 16th, so that's a 16th and that's a 16th. Together that makes an 8th, and that's how you get this. I love it. Okay, so this looked a little simple to me, and I thought about doubling up the pocket, but instead I'm going to add this little cut apart. Not cut apart, um, it's a die cut. And I'm going to tell you where it's from because there's two die cut packages there's what they call the ephemera 27 die cuts which is mostly flowers and pine cones and then there's the other one which is also ephemera you'd think there'd be a pack one and two but it doesn't say that one has 26 and this one has 27 and I'm going to use this element right here this one is more like just general elements. This is all floral. So I'm going to do my best to use both. And I just ink the edges to make it stand out against the background a little bit more. And I think once I get this in, the, the cover page looks a lot more balanced. So now the question is, do I want it centered off to the side? I'm going to slightly angle it down, like so. So that actually wound up being quite centered. Okay, there we go. So we've got this nice pocket. We've got another pocket here. And then we've got lots of photo space in this one. And I decided not to mount this one because I like it's so heavy. It doesn't need it. And I just like what it says on the back. It's got the Christmas tree song. Okay, so that's it for page one. Oops, I don't want it that way. I want it to be the contrast to this. And I like that the way I did my paper flow because this looks pretty with or without an insert. So hope you guys enjoyed. Be back soon with page two. Again, this is Mistletoe and Holly from Blue Fern.